this lesson, we're going to take a look at IAAA, which is identification, authentication, authorization, and accounting. The four components of IAAA are fundamental to effective access control. They play a critical role in restricting the access and control of systems or resources to only authorized individuals. IAAA is used in various security mechanisms and technology, such as access control systems, firewalls, intrusion detection and prevention systems, and identity and access management systems. By implementing IAAA principles, organizations can ensure that only authorized users are allowed access to sensitive information and resources, and that all user activity is monitored and audited to detect and prevent security breaches. The first component is identification. Identification is the process of verifying the identity of a user or entity attempting to access a system or resource. Identification can be achieved through various means, including passwords, biometric authentication, security tokens, and smart cards. The goal of identification is to establish the identity of the user or entity attempting to access the system or resource, and to ensure that only authorized users are granted access. Identification is typically the first step in a multi-step authentication process, which may also include factors such as knowledge, like something a user knows, possession, something a user has, and inheritance, something unique to an individual like a fingerprint. One important consideration in identification is the use of strong passwords. Weak passwords, such as common words or easily guessable combinations of letters and numbers, can easily be compromised by attackers. Organizations should establish password policies that require users to choose strong, unique passwords and to change them periodically. Another consideration in identification is the use of multi-factor authentication, or MFA, which involves requiring users to provide multiple forms of identification before being granted access. MFA can greatly increase the security of a system or resource by requiring attackers to compromise multiple factors in order to gain access. Many organizations are now implementing MFA as a standard security measure, particularly for sensitive systems and resources. The second component of IAAA is authentication. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user, device, or system. Prior to accessing a resource, it is important to confirm the person or entity is who they claim to be. Authentication can be completed using a variety of methods, including passwords, biometrics, two-factor authentication, smart cards, and public key infrastructure, or PKI. The third component of IAAA is authorization. Once an individual has been authenticated, the system can determine what level of access they should be granted. This is the process of authorization. Authorization, also known as access control, is the process of granting or denying access to resources based on an individual's identity and level of privileges or permissions. It is a crucial aspect of information security as it ensures only authorized individuals have access to sensitive data, systems, and resources. The process of authorization involves several steps. First, authentication. Before granting access, the system must verify the user's identity through the use of credentials such as username, passwords, or biometrics. Next is authorization policy. Once the user has been authenticated, the system checks the authorization policy to determine the level of access that the user is authorized to have. The policy is usually defined by the system administrator or security team and can be based on factors such as job role, security clearance, or other criteria. Next is access control. After the user has been authenticated or authorized, the system grants access to the appropriate resources such as files, applications, or systems. The level of access granted may be read-only, read-write, or administrative access. There are several types of authorization models used in information security. First is mandatory access control. This model is used in high security environments such as government agencies or military organizations. It uses a hierarchical classification system to determine access privileges, with users only able to access resources that are at the same or lower classification level than their own. Next is role-based access control. In this model, access is granted based on the user's job role or function within the organization. Next is attribute-based access control. This model uses a set of attributes to determine access privileges such as user location, time of day, or security clearance level. 
It is a more flexible model than rule-based and can be used to create a more granular access control policy. Finally, rule-based access control is a model where access is granted based on a set of predefined rules or policies. The final component of IAAA is accounting. Accounting refers to the practice of tracking and documenting the actions of users and systems within an organization's information systems. Accounting provides a record of who accessed what information, when they accessed it, and what they did with it. The purpose of accounting is to enable organizations to monitor and analyze security-related events such as login attempts, file access, and system changes. Accounting can help organizations detect unauthorized or malicious activities, identify patterns of misuse or abuse, and provide evidence for forensic investigations in the event of a security incident. There are two types of accounting, system accounting and user accounting. System accounting involves tracking the actions of a system itself, such as system startups and shutdowns, system crashes, and resource utilization. User accounting involves tracking the actions of individual users, such as logins, logouts, and file access. In order to implement accounting, organizations typically use logging and auditing tools to record system and user activities. These logs are stored in a centralized location and can be reviewed and analyzed by security personnel to detect security incidents and investigate security breaches. However, it is important to note that logging and auditing can be resource-intensive processes that can impact system performance if not implemented properly. Organizations must carefully balance the need for comprehensive logging and auditing with the impact on system performance and ensure that logging is done in a secure manner to prevent unauthorized modification or deletion of logs. Overall, the components of IAAA are essential for ensuring the security of a system or resource. One important aspect of IAAA components is that they should be implemented in a layered approach. This means that multiple layers of security should be in place to protect against potential threats. While strong security is important, it is also important to ensure that the access control measures do not hinder productivity or excessively impede user experience. Another consideration while implementing the IAAA components is that they should be balanced with usability. Ultimately, the success of any IAAA program depends on the collaboration and cooperation of all stakeholders, including the IT staff, management, and end users. By working together to establish and maintain strong IAAA controls, organizations can better protect their sensitive data and systems and minimize the risk of cyber threats and data breaches.